The actual, it was the moment that sort of changed things for me was in the Six Nations in 2010. So I was picked to start the first game and it was against France. And I was asked if I would do an interview and, and in those days if I was asked, I would always accept, but as soon as I accepted, I'd be thinking about it and I'd be stressing about it until I did it. And so then I did it and it was shocking. I stammered, I stuttered. And when I stammer, I blink and I rub my eyes and all this sort of stuff. And I was so embarrassed by it. It's got to go Farrell. Well. Brown. Brown drawing his man. And Brown for the line. That's the response from Saracens. It's the Scottish international. It's a funny thing, a stammer, because there's still not a huge amount of understanding of it. And everyone's not exactly sure why it happens. I do know under pressure it gets worse. I do know if I sing I don't stammer, so it's a bit of a catch. 22, unfortunately, I can't just sing all the time. Uh, sometimes I've got to speak, uh, sadly. But now nah, it, it's a challenge, but it's, it's in some ways as well, I think it's actually made me a better person too. One of the big things, and I should have read up a fair bit on it, and it's the resilience, and I genuinely think as a consequence of my stammer. I think it's helped me with that. It's helped me to build that. It's helped me to take control of my own destiny uh, because there's no point to me sitting here and thinking, oh, I've got a stammer, it's not fair, and life is not fair. You know, uh, everyone's got issues and everyone's got challenges. I was like, okay, enough's enough. I'm fed up of having this thing which sort of holds me back a bit. So in the April of that year, I signed up and I went on a program called the Maguire program. And it's basically a speech program. And there's a cycle of speaking. There's a process of speaking, but it's also very much focused on assertive self-acceptance. So accepting it as a part of you and also and also never hiding or never letting it hold you back. Everyone's got challenges and as I said, ultimately, <laughs> I never want to be the sort of guy when I'm 60, 70, 80, a lot older, a lot fatter, that, that I think I could have done something. And that was the thing, I never wanted to have an excuse as to why, as to why something was holding me back. Kelly Brown. As a culture in rugby, I think it is a very inclusive culture. Look at some of the body shapes of the guys, you know, everyone's a different shape. You know, we've got some chunky monkeys and some tall string beans, and then we've got some small guys, some fast guys. I think it's a fantastic environment. I think it's a hugely inclusive environment. I almost, as a player, as I was going through, I would probably rather if people actually did have a bit of a laugh and a joke about it, because if they don't, it's just like an elephant in the room. Certainly from my experience, it might not be everyone's experience, but from my experience, I think it's a hugely inclusive culture. You know, everyone's different. Everyone understands that everyone's different. And, and yeah, there's a lot of banter, uh, but I would have said that almost all of the time it's done in good spirits. And that's, and that's what makes it such an unbelievable sport.